Saudi Arabia follows the second opinion, which means as much as they use telescopic vision, they believe nobody must follow our moon. That is the Saudi standpoint. Nobody should follow our sighting. All those who are following that sighting are doing so because they believe that they want to follow what the world is probably following or what Saudi Arabia is following. So Saudi Arabia and the ulama there will tell you, the senior scholars will tell you, we believe you should look for your moon for in your own area. Don't rely on us. That reason, there is no uh, official liaison with the moon uh, sighting committees of the globe and Saudi Arabia because they are not obliged to actually uh, connive or to uh, cooperate with people who they themselves don't believe that those people should be following this opinion. I hope you understand. Uh, just praying and making dua for unity, for establishing a criteria where all people are happy and it's really, this is an ongoing problem. It's going on for so many years. People in one locality having Eid on different dates and everybody has the same uh, concern, same worry. Why don't we just unite? But now we have a problem. If we want to establish a unity, but then the calendar that we are looking in and then we are seeing that how can we follow a calendar, a criteria which is saying subject to the new moon or the sighting of the moon, but the calendar is based on the Ummul Qura calendar. We see this problem. The question that many people would, uh, would ask, what if I travel to Saudi Arabia and I'm offering my Hajj or I'm doing my Umrah? Now, somebody may say, why do you there while you are there? Why are you following uh, the declaration that is made by the Riyadh authorities? And I think it will be very appropriate to bring back Mufti Zakaria Akudi to really remove the misconception that people have, especially for those who are traveling for Umrah and Hajj. Alhamdulillah, The issue asked by Sheikh Suleiman with regards to why do we follow Saudi Arabia whilst we are traveling for Hajj or Umrah there, whilst, and when we're back home, we tend to follow our local sighting or the Batli Moon sighting of Fakul Ulama criteria. What we must understand is that it's the jurisdiction of that country that matters to us. So whilst we are in Saudi Arabia, we are under the qada, the jurisdiction of Saudi Arabia. So then we will follow the decision made by Saudi Arabia. But when we're in another country, for instance, we're back home in England or in India or Pakistan, we will not be bound by that jurisdiction. So we will follow the local sighting. If a person from another country was to travel to India and in his country he had already fasted 30 days and then he, when he reached India the people of India were still fasting because they were one day behind then that person will not say that I've already fasted for 30 days he will then be bound by the jurisdiction of the Indian moon sighting authority and will have to do a 31st fast and then he will celebrate Eid. So the jurisdiction of that country you are in applies. Now, the reason we do not practice on Saudi Arabia whilst we are here is that we are not bound by that jurisdiction. Whereas once we travel to Saudi Arabia for Hajj or Umrah, we are under their qaza, we are under their jurisdiction, and we will continue to follow that decision made by them. So now, you know, uh, somebody may say, al hajj kama yahajjun nas. So hajj is when the people offer the hajj. But then we hear also a Somu Kama Yasumun Nas. So people who are not even in Saudi Arabia, they said when the Som fasting is declared, whatever declaration is made there, then it's no problem the to follow. The declaration of your country of jurisdiction. So your local jurisdiction, when you are supposed to fast, you will fast. So it has to be in yes. your local... In your jurisdiction. So when you go for Hajj, your jurisdiction is that of the Saudi authority, you will follow that. Yes, yes. When you are in your hometown in your own country you are in the jurisdiction of that and that is where the people who will fast according to your jurisdiction you will fast accordingly so can it be pointed out that is there any ruling to say that for people who are living here in the united kingdom whatever because there is fatwa for those who say that we can follow whatever is declared there even though we are living in this part so because there is a uh, i mean ongoing discussion 
Mufti Ashfaq highlighted some of it, but now how do we explain, because when you have two different fatawa, one said it is okay, one said not allowed, what do you think is the best way forward? You must stick to local sighting because that is what we are bound by. If we understand it in another way, when there was not this technology available, okay. so we would not be able to find out when Hajj was at all. Sometimes if there is a local Haji traveling 30, 40 years ago, when you don't have to go too far behind, 30, 40 years ago, if there was somebody local going for Hajj, you will find out when that person returns the date of Hajj. Otherwise, you never even find out when Hajj took place because the technology and communication was not there. So how can you then fast according to the day of Arafah in Saudi Arabia? You cannot determine that. So for many years, most countries throughout the world followed their local sighting. And that was their obligation and that, that was the jurisdiction they were bound by. It's only now that we have the technology where we find out which country is celebrating Eid when. So just because the news is now available, it does not change the masala. The because, masala has been there for 1400 years. You follow your local sighting. That many people, they start their Ramadan with the announcement of the different various channels. So Mufti Zakaria, could you just clarify? If, for example, we are here in the UK and it is Asr time now, and we still have maybe two, three hours left for Maghrib. But an, an, an announcement has been made on a channel, for example, on a television or radio program. Uh, what is the appropriate way? How should we, because you know the public, they want to go with the flow. And when you get a, an announcement already been made, uh, how should we uh, encourage and remind the people, especially in our masajid, like there will be those who are in I'tikaf, for example, and already before, even two hours before even sunset, they have already folded up all the sleeping bags, they've cleared everything out, and uh, announcement, we have not even our, it's not even sunset here in the UK. Could you just uh, clarify that? That uh, the same question has been answered, mashallah, by Mufti Yusuf Sahib in his last words, that we should observe the obligation of these months of ibadat by, in the full manner, and not be hasty in our uh, habits by just rushing into a decision so that we can move on to Eid or celebrate Eid. The importance of the month of Ramzan needs, needs to be observed in the full. And what is the hukam from uh, the Prophet ﷺ in hadith? wa The starting and com uh, the commencement of Ramadan and the ending of Ramadan is to be done on the sighting of the moon. And that is your local moon sighting that has been clarified previously so now just because you have got information from abroad that it is already been announced and because of the time differences you will get news from abroad but the initial obligation is local sighting first if there is no local sighting then you have to defer that in uh, judgment to a foreign sighting. So regardless of the fact that you've got three o'clock in the afternoon or one o'clock in the afternoon information from abroad, you will have to wait for your maghrib to take place in order to establish local sighting. Only after that can you preside over a decision whether Ramzan is over or Ramzan has started because that is the hukam of sunnah and the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, that uh, we have brought into a very important discussion on unity, why we need to establish unity. I just want to bring back Brother Aziz. Mashallah, you've been very patient, and I'm sure uh, in, on many of your journeys, you know, Ibn Battuta, you made a lot of journeys. But one of your journey, could you tell us about your practical uh, observation of the Hilal? You did travel to Abu Dhabi, which was Mulana Shu'aib. That was in the Abu Dhabi conference. I know there was one in 2009. There was another one that you yourself attended. But uh, what about your practical observation in Medina? And which year was that? And also tell us something about your observation in Makkah. Yes, I was the first person from the UK to uh, visit the uh, official Hilal sighting location, which is actually about 25 kilometers from Makkah. It's in Shumatia, or previously known as Hudaybiyah. Uh, mashallah, they've got very, very sophisticated telescopes there, very powerful. They showed us Mars with the telescope. But because they're actually observing with the Umul Qur'an date, which is technically the 28th day, 
there was no way of sighting the Hilal. So even with these powerful telescopes, and they have you know, the Imams there, they have the Qazi there, the jurists there, the uh, counselors there, and some local people there as well in Makkah, none of them could actually sight it. And this is actually the practice of nine different official Hilal sighting locations throughout the country. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I've been there several times. We also visited with 17 other people from the UK uh, in 2012, uh, the official Hilal sighting location in Medina, which is again about 25 kilometers towards the airport from uh, Masjid al Um And because the sunset is about 20 minutes before in Riyadh, we attempted the sighting obviously after Maghrib, but we already knew the announcement was made in Riyadh because according to Umul Qura, uh, the next day was supposed to be the first of Shawwal. So the announcement was already made, but we still made the attempt. And none of the people who were there, there were about 50 people there, all very noble people, mashallah, none of them could actually cite the Hilal. So the problem is, they are making the efforts, but they're making the effort on the wrong day. So therefore, they cannot cite the Hilal. Yes, now this is a very important point that you have highlighted. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.